Hello, my fellow Americans. With 4th of July just upon us and the election season beginning to ramp up, I figured it was due time for me to do something very patriotic for my country. And what better way to do that than by ranking all 45 men who have held the office of U.S. President on only the merit of their names. Now, let me lay down some ground rules. This is only on their names. No politics, no aspects of their personality, none of that. Keep that in mind the whole time. This is going to be, however, on every aspect of their names. Middle names. These guys got cool middle names, if they have them. A lot of them don't, which actually threw me off. Uh, nicknames. These guys have great nicknames that actually have caused a few historical oddities, you'll see. And also, the time period in which they had that name. Because sometimes I'll look back and I think, we had a president with that name in that year? Nuts. Anyway, let's kick things off with the president with by far the most boring and dullest name of the group. John Tyler. I mean, what is there to say? It's just a boring name. I mean, can you believe we had a president named John Tyler? It's so average. It's so, I don't know, I feel like my computer would spit this out from random name generators. Anyway, let's move on to someone who is only a smidge better. John Adams. A little better. I mean, I know more Tylers than I know Adams, but still no points for originality here. Andrew Johnson. I mean, it's a little better. Had he gone by Andy, would be a different story entirely, but that he didn't, so. Andrew Johnson. I mean, longer name, I think I can appreciate that a little bit more. A little bit more originality. Still nothing much. Andrew Jackson. I mean, Definitely better. I think Jack is a much more commanding name than Johnson. I mean, he was a more commanding man for sure, but I don't know. Still a little boring. I still feel like I know an Andrew Jackson. Yeah, Andrew Jackson, yeah, he's in my chemistry class, you know. Yeah, still nothing much. James Monroe. Eh, I mean, James is still boring. Monroe's definitely better than Johnson or Jackson or John, but I mean, this, this could still just be like a guy. It doesn't, doesn't really seem all that unique. And who do we see next but James Madison? I mean, it fits. When you're listing out the presidents, you link them together as well. You have George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, like, I don't know. They're kind of always grouped together. Their names are very similar. You got two James M's right after each other in presidency too? I mean, that's crazy. Madison, little better than Monroe. I think longer syllables helps it out. So it makes it a little bit more distinguished. Other than that, still just a name. Thomas Jefferson. Definitely better. Um, I think people will be a little surprised by this because Jefferson, I mean, I personally, even I always think of President Jefferson, but if I, if I imagine that you weren't president and you were told me, yeah, there's this really important guy from, like, you know, 250 years ago. His name is... Thomas Jefferson, I'd go, oh, okay, well, sounds like just an average guy to me, but definitely better. I think his name does have some, it's a little iconic, but, uh, you know, you gotta remember, it's still kind of just a boring name. If you, if you didn't know Thomas Jefferson, it's still kind of just a, just a name. Benjamin Harrison, could be a fun name, I think. Uh, definitely would have a lot more impact if he were the one responsible for a $100 bill, Benjamin, but that's Ben Franklin. So he unfortunately loses some points there for being the less important Benjamin. But I think it's still, it's a good name. I'll say like, we're, we're definitely getting above boring. Most of the presidents actually have pretty good names you're gonna find out. But I mean, you know, you still gotta be relative. It's still kind of a little bland, a little, you know, it's still Ben Harrison. I mean, it's still, still reasonably a guy I could meet today. Still, you know. Classmate, who knows? John Quincy Adams. I know that we're really only emphasizing his middle name to distinguish him from his dad, John Adams, but this is such an improvement. I mean, how often do you meet a guy who has a name starting with Q? I don't think I've, eh, I've met one. I've only met one, I believe. But either way, this really spruced up the name here. And I think it goes to show just how much a good middle name can bump these guys up on the list. Now, I gotta be honest, there's probably a little bit of bias here. I did grow up in a town called Quincy, named after John Quincy Adams.
But still, I think it goes to show it's a definite improvement. It's starting to be a little more interesting. George Washington. Now I can hear you saying, what? But George Washington, he's the namesake of Washington, D.C. and Washington State. What are you doing? Well, George, let me, let me start at the beginning. George, boring. It's George. Oh, that, it doesn't even have like a big commanding presence. It's just George. Washington is good. I do like Washington. But that's only gotten him this far. I just think there's better alternatives ahead. And yes, his influence, his influence is good. Honestly, that's why he's above like Thomas Jefferson. They're kind of in the same boat. Jefferson, Washington, both really solid last names, dulled down by a boring first name. But Washington gets the point here because of that influence. It already has helped him. I'm not disregarding that. James Buchanan. Now, before I get to the ranking, let me explain something. The reason it says James Buchanan, and then James Buchanan Jr. below it, is because this is what he went by, and this is his full legal name. Now, you might think, come on, did we really need to make this distinction? But I wanted to be fair, and for every president that didn't go by their full legal name, provided at the bottom. This is going to make a lot of difference later down the line. So I'm just starting it now so that it's fair. All the previous presents that we've talked about, those have all gone by their full legal name. They either didn't have a middle name or John Quincy Adams went with his middle name to distinguish him from his dad. Now, onto the ring. James Buchanan, better than George Washington, I think. I know they might sound outrageous. Same with Thomas Jefferson. All have that kind of dull first name. This is our third James we've seen already. Buchanan, I think it's just kind of like a, it's a fun, old, tiny sounding last name. It screams president to me. It's like, yeah, Mr. Buchanan is president. It's like, yeah, yeah, I can feel that, you know, that makes sense. So I get that this is like, this seems arbitrary and it is, this whole thing is arbitrary, but I think it just slightly takes the edge over someone like Washington. William McKinley, I think it's a, it's a little more fun only barely. I don't have much more to add. I just think Muck, Muck Kinley is kind of a, it's a fun one to say. It's kind of a cool name, I think. William, you're going to see a lot of Williams. Uh, boring first name, I get it. Uh, however, I think his last name, like with a lot of the ones I've just talked about, carries him and just has a little bit of an edge over Buchanan. McKinley, pretty good last name. William Howard Taft, another three-named president, unless you want to refer to him just as Taft, which I often do. Um, if this were a ranking of presidents with the greatest made-up stories about them, top of the list, easy. The bathtub thing, insane that people still believe that it's true. Anyway, I think William, I already know, boring. Howard, fun middle name. I think it just, it's on a Howard, I don't know. It sounds like a fun middle name. Taft, interesting. It's kind of, it's got a succinctness to it. I see why he's called just Taft sometimes. Overall, I think this is a pretty good name. We're getting into the, like, the, the these are good name territory. William Henry Harrison. Let me say, he and Taft were like this when I was putting the list together. Because how can they not be? They're presidents who go by all three names, who both start with William H. I mean, ugh. But, his name has just a little bit of sing-songiness to it. William Henry Harrison. It makes you want to say the full thing. Especially those two H's, they just kind of, they bring it together. It has, has some cohesion to it that I think just gave him a little bit of an edge. But I can at least say confidently that no matter how you feel about that ranking, this is the last William for a little bit. So we're in the clear. Donald Trump or Donald John Trump. Oh, oh, John, what a bomb of a middle name. It's, it's ruining the flow of his name. It would be so much better if he just got rid of it. No, John is bad. Donald, more interesting first name than George or Thomas, but still not the like most out there one it could be. Trump, definitely, definitely a good last name. I think this is a, a fun one to say, Trump. I don't know, kind of, it has a funny ring to it. So I do enjoy it on that front, but man, I, I cannot stand John. John is really bringing it down. It just, ugh, sorry, sorry to go on about it. James K. Polk, or James Knox Polk. 
one of these things that is great both ways. You know, James, still bland first name. Polk is a good last name. It definitely feels old timey. Definitely feels like the right time period. K has a really good, like, punchy sound to it. James K. Polk works well with the K at the end of Polk. James Knox Polk. Knox, completely different. You lose the K sound, but Knox is still a cool name. I know a guy named Knox, one of the funniest people I ever knew. I'm going up to Knoxville later this summer. Either way, I think both of these names are pretty good. They make pretty good ring to them. James K. Polk is probably a little better, but honestly, besides James, really good latter half here. George H. W. Bush, or George Herbert Walker Bush. Now, I, I know this is a long one, first four named president on the list. And I think it's kind of fun. I think George H.W. Bush, you could shorten it to George Bush, he did also go by that, is fun. I think Herbert is a funny, like, I guess first middle name. It's one of two. Um, I think this is a good name. Very succinct if you just say George Bush, but also can be a fun one to say long form. I will explain, spoilers for the next one, I will explain why his son is ranked above him. You might think, he has Herbert, he has the funnier middle name, you know, he has more name to his name. Why should he not be higher? And I'll explain in one second. George W. Bush, or George Walker Bush. Now, you might be thinking, well, why is he ahead? And that's because of W. I think it's just a middle name, it's just Walker, right? Same one that his dad had. No, because he went by W. But he didn't just go by W the letter, he went by it spelled out phonetically, and phonetically like if you're from the South. D-U-B-Y-A-W. And I just, I have to give points for such a hilarious nickname, for such a hilarious present. I mean, it suits him so well that I just, I gotta give him points for that. I mean, I can't knock him. It's W for W, and he, he deserves it all the way. Franklin Pierce. Franklin? Good first name. I grew up on a street named Franklin. Also named for Benjamin Franklin, but, you know, that's out of the picture. Pierce? Good last name. It pierces, you know? It's, it's a good last name. This is a president who seems like he gets down to business. You know, Franklin Pierce. It just has a succinctness to it that I appreciate, and I think it rolls off the tongue well. Bill Clinton, or William Jefferson Clinton. So, Bill, great first name, I think. Clinton, good last name, kind of kind of iffy, but Bill is just kind of like a, I don't know, it's a funny name, better than William. He did a good job shortening it. Now with his full name, and I'll explain this in just a second. Jefferson, great callback for him being after Thomas Jefferson, and like I said earlier, already having that mindset of Jefferson as Thomas Jefferson. Definitely good, makes you think presidential already. Now, when we talk about missed potential, he could have been Blythe the third, although he legally changed his name to Clinton uh, for after his stepfather, which definitely makes more sense. Good on him for doing that. But I just gotta say, if he had been, you know, Bill Blythe the third, bump him up 20 ranks. I mean, he's up there. That's awesome. A president who's the third? We've had juniors, you know, James Buchanan Jr., but I don't know. It just has this, this nice, awesome sound to it. Chester A. Arthur, or Chester Allen Arthur. Oh man, Allen, not in the same boat as John with Trump, but Allen, it's so out of place. That's such a modern name, Allen? When you have such a funny, old-timey name like Chester, right before it, good move on him for going with Chester A. Arthur. Definitely helped them a lot there. Um, Arthur, decent last name. I think it's a fun one. I mostly hear it as a first name though, so it does throw me off just a little. Chester, I know I've just said, but Chester is so out there and funny as a first name. I never have met, and probably will never meet, sadly, a person named Chester. Um, Alan? A little out of place, but I can forgive it because he mostly didn't go by it, and it doesn't really ruin the flow of his name when you say it. And Chester, Chester, Chester outweighs it. 
Oh, Jimmy Carter, or James Earl Carter Jr. I'm very biased. For two reasons, actually. A, Carter, Carter, you got it. I, we respect each other. But also, because he's the only president who I have met face to face. I saw Bill Clinton from like six feet away at a rally one time, but like I've actually met him. So he gets some points there. I know, I know, unfair, but I don't care. It's Jimmy Carter and the name thing, it's Jimmy Carter. James Earl Carter Jr. I hear James Earl and I immediately think James Earl Jones. So he loses a little bit of points there because it always sends my mind in the wrong direction, but he kind of gains them back by making his first name Jimmy, because in modern day, modern day, he is still alive, for president who have been, to have been called Jimmy is really funny, especially when he's just like a guy from Georgia who did peanuts and stuff, like, that's funny. Like, I don't know, Jimmy Carter, yeah, that guy can be president, I don't know. Zachary Taylor, kind of the same element as Jimmy Carter here, but Zachary is even funnier than Jimmy. Especially when you consider that he's like over a hundred years before Jimmy Carter was president. And you think they had a guy named Zachary back then? Taylor? I don't care. It's Taylor. It doesn't matter. His name is Zachary. Uh, Woodrow Wilson. Or Thomas Woodrow Wilson. The first of the alliteration names on this list. Those are usually pretty good, except for when they're ruined by his real first name. I mean, I have to give points. Clever to whoever was on his PR team who said, you know, drop Thomas. Much better as Woodrow. Woodrow is a cool first name. Wilson's a decent last name. It's just a shame that, and it's, it's at the beginning too. I mean, Thomas Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson, great. Thomas Woodrow Wilson, just subpar. Real shame. Harry S. Truman, I hear you say it. Carter, you've forgotten to put his real full name at the bottom. Nope. No, I didn't, and that's why he made it this high on the list. You see, when he was born, neither side of his family could agree what should his middle name be. They couldn't decide if it should stand for Ship or Solomon. And so they came to the fantastic compromise of neither, which I have to go with for. S as just, just Harry S. Truman. No elaboration needed. Truman, good last name. I would like a true man as president. Man who speaks the truth, I'd vote for him. But yeah, no, the S thing, it's, it's just so funny to me. Abraham Lincoln. Honest Abe, first of all. Terrific nickname. Goes along with the Truman thing, but even more in your face. He's honest. Lincoln? Pretty solid last name. It always makes you think of the logs and uh, Abraham. What a profound first name. President Abraham. Uh, yeah, I mean, overall, it's a pretty good name. Makes, makes it to the top 20. James Garfield. James Abram Garfield. You know why he's this high on the list. It's not because of James. James is bad. It's not because of Abram. Abram's all right. It's because of Garfield. Garfield is hilarious. His name reminds me of something hilarious. Therefore, he makes it to number 19 on the list. Simple as that. Grover Cleveland, or Stephen Grover Cleveland. You might be thinking, well, hey, why didn't he get bumped down for having just a normal first name like Woodrow Wilson did? And it's because it rhymes. It's because this is Stephen Cleveland, and that is just a great combo right there, which I just can't knock. I mean, come on. However, he made the right choice, I think, by going by his middle name, Grover, because Grover, all right, hell of a first name. That thing is just out there, Grover. And also, the only Grover probably since he's died has been the one on Sesame Street. So, great association there. Other good association, Cleveland, makes me think of Cleveland. Good, good American, makes me think of place in America. All around, good job naming this guy. Ronald Reagan, or Ronald Wilson Reagan. Second up of the alliterations, and also second Wilson. Also strange how that happens, but Wilson 
it, it ruins the flow a little. Ronald Reagan, great alliteration right there. Great roll off the tongue. He knew to get rid of Wilson. He did a good job here. He was an actor. He knew what to do. But I do think it bumps him down a little below the other two alliteration names. But otherwise, this is a solid name. Very good job. Herbert Hoover, or Herbert Clark Hoover. Man, Clark, and I know this is gonna go against my own reasoning. Clark is just so clunky and so out of place that it's kind of funny, I don't know. I, I've always liked the name Clark, I think it's a fun name. And Herbert Hoover is already a funny name. It behooves itself to have a funny middle name. And Herbert, Herbert's good, Hoover's funny. Clark, I, I don't know. I do like it. It probably, it is more clunky than Ronald Wilson Reagan, but I don't know. I have a little bit of an affinity for it, so I'm going to give it the edge. The most interesting one on the list, Gerald Ford, or Gerald Rudolph Ford Jr., or former Leslie Lynch King Jr. Now, this is a story, this is another case where he was born with this name and adopted this name for of his family and i like i can't fault him for this this isn't his thing but president with the last name king i mean yes i understand fourth of july us leaving the king very very good thing we don't like king however he has alliteration here he has the word king i don't know this seems like a killer last name to me however it's all right he's saved by having ford which is an american classic brand name last name and rudolph which is funny. So he still is in the good books. He still, despite missing out on what could have been like an even cooler last name, he still made it work. Yeah, Gerald Rudolph Ford. What else could you ask for? Ulysses S. Grant. You've probably already noticed that S once again stands for just S. Now Ulysses, I love studying the classics. So Ulysses already, bing, I love that. Grant, on the other hand, you might be thinking, well, this is this kind of a plain last name. Why is he all the way up in 14? Consider that you can shorten his name to U.S. Grant. And how do you, how do you even top that for, for campaigning? U.S. Grant? Of course I'm going to vote for the guy whose initials are United States. Only way this could get better if, if, if this were Ulysses S. Arthur or something. If that guy ever runs for office, 100%, you know, he's winning all the Electoral College. We're getting a 535. It's all, he gets everything. Joe Biden or Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. Man, that's a killer middle name. Robinette? I, I've never heard anything like it. I, well, Robin is like it. I've heard of Robin. But Robinette? It's just, I don't know. There's something about it that's cool. And he has the Jimmy Carter factor of being president of the United States named Joe. Joe? Joe is a cup of coffee. Like, I don't know. It, the contrast here makes for something hilarious. You would never imagine that President Joe Biden is really named Joseph Robinette. Either way, I'm a big fan. I think that's, that's a cool middle name. Dwight D. Eisenhower otherwise known as Dwight David Eisenhower. Now, this is one of these where it works anyway, and that's why he's so high on the list. Dwight D. Eisenhower works well. Dwight David Eisenhower works well because of alliteration. Or Ike. You want to just call him Ike? That works. Ike, you know, if I say Ike, there's no other Ike I'm talking about. I'm talking about him. And we all know that, and it was such a good campaign. Everyone knows Ike for a president. Da, 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 like, Everyone knows that. So I gotta give him points for having a name that works no matter which way you try to spin it. Teddy Roosevelt, or Theodore Roosevelt Jr. Man, really hitting the stride in terms of good names here. Roosevelt, what a, what a superb last name. And it'll show up again. And then Theodore sounds intelligent and dignified. And Teddy sounds like, you know, I mean, yeah, it's not one you would hear around today, and that's kind of why it works. It's like, yeah, he kind of seems like just kind of a guy, and he really was. He was just doing stuff, man, that's Teddy Roosevelt. That is such a good name for especially the president that he was, I feel. Good job. 
starting the top 10 strong with Warren G. Harding or Warren Gamaliel Harding. Man, I, I, I've heard Warren G. Harding forever. And he's never one that I've looked up what it stood for. I guess in my mind he was another one of the no, no full middle name guys like Truman or Graham. But man, this dad bumped him up for sure. Cause like Warren G, that sounds cool. Like Warren G. Harding, what a, what a hardball president. He's really gonna lay his fist down. But Warren Gamaliel Harding, I don't know. It it had this mystique to him that I would never have guessed. I thought it'd be like Warren George Harding or something. But man, Calvin Coolidge. It's just kind of a cool name. This big CC, you know, kind of gets to the point. Best of the alliteration, I think, the k, k really hits it off. All around, just a really cool name. Martin Van Buren. Ooh. So, working piece of it's Martin. He's got like, I don't know, it's got this egghead quality to it. I don't know. Makes me see, think of like an intelligent man. And then Van Buren. It, like, he goes together, obviously, Van Buren. But like, it does what, like, now, way long ago, McKinley kind of has, like, I, I get it's a preposition, it kind of like leads into the last name, but McKinley Van Buren does so much better. It feels like this, mmm, Van Buren is in charge. I don't know. Uh, Richard Nixon. Richard Milhouse Nixon. Let's work out. It. Nixon. Ooh, using the X? Oh, that's just fantastic. You don't see names with Xs. Especially not as the first letter, because I know a few people, you got your Xavier's, but Nixon with an X in the middle, and then you got Milhouse. Milhouse. Solid middle name. Milhouse is fun. And then Richard. Richard. Solid name on its own. And then you shorten it. And then you put it on all those campaign stuff. And then you make slogans using words that rhyme with it. And you end up with this. Yeah, that's real. That is a real piece of campaign merchandise that people wore to support him. And it is something. And it definitely is why he's this high on the list. JFK. John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Wow. The three initials. Great move. So, so impactful. It's only brought down by the fact that two other presidents did it a little better, and I'll get into that in a second. But then you get to his name. John is John. I've talked a lot of bad about John. It's like the bottom like 10 on the list, I know. I grew up past because he turned it into J and he made it a lot better. Fitzgerald with a Z. I know I just talked about the X and the X is rare in names. The Z is even rarer, despite the fact that we had a president named Zachary, but still it's in the middle of the word, so I'm giving it more points. And then Kennedy, Kennedy, this was an icon. We all know the Kennedys, everyone knows the the Kennedys are still using the three initial trick to this day, but man, this is this is how you name a president. Rutherford B. Hayes or Rutherford Burchard Hayes. What a collection of names here. He's he's close to uh, I will give you a couple spoilers. He's close to the number one's qualifications and the fact that like I just don't know these as words. Like, there have been names on the list where it's like, I don't know anyone named, like, I don't know anyone named Abraham, but Abraham's a name. Everyone knows Abraham is a name. I've never met a Burchard or a Rutherford. Hayes, I do actually come from a line of Hayes back in Ireland. However, these first two, these first two are such a collection, and I never even knew Burchard until today. He was going to be almost this high just from Rutherford. So he has really done a number here, having such out there names. LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson. Okay, a lot to unpack here that I, you don't even know yet. LBJ, he does the three initials thing. This is great. He does it, I think, worse than Kennedy. However, he's gonna be bumped up a little. Lyndon Baines, fantastic first set and very important. Johnson, nah, we can throw it out. Johnson did that now. Now, Lyndon Baines Johnson marries Lady Bird. Not a different last name, but she adopts his last name. So he marries Lady Bird Johnson. And they have two children. 
Linda Bird Johnson, and Lucy Baines Johnson. So that is a family of four in fourth place, all with the initials LBJ. I didn't put them in fourth on purpose, I just wanted to. I've noticed that as I looked over and I was like, I gotta mention that they're in fourth and then it's family of four, but either way, the commitment to LBJ, he, he's, gotta, he's gotta get some bonus points for that. He named his kids after his initials. Any shock here? FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Easily the best of the three initial presidents. I mean, you know, JFK, great. Definitely more iconic than LBJ, but LBJ still did it really well, and he has the whole family connection. FDR, man, he did it first. I think he has the best collection of letters here. FDR, kind of all hits a point there. And Franklin, good name. Makes me think of Benjamin Franklin. Delano, interesting. Makes me think of Delaware, but maybe that's just me. And Roosevelt makes me think of his relative, another president. Man, this is this is all coming together. It's a very like, I don't know, old time, not old timey, but like impressive and kind of grandeur type name for the longest serving president. I mean, it all fits. Barack Obama. Barack Hussein Obama II. The second is cool. But now I'm gonna say the thing that everyone who interviewed him in 2007 and 2008, when he was first running for office, all of them said the exact same thing. Wow, your name is really fun to say because it just is. Barack Obama it is so fun to say. And just on that, and it's a cool name, it has a good ring to it, everything flows. It's the most fun to say, except for one more president. One president who I don't even think most people know existed. A president who has words that aren't words for his name. Just, you've never met anyone who has a name quite like this president. Number one is Millard Fillmore. What a name. You can't beat it. It's not going to happen. There's no one who can run for office who's going to have a more wacky, more funny, more just weirdo name than Millard Fillmore. It can't be done. He has this weird just combo of everything. The vowel sounds, the, the Millard Fillmore. It's, it's so out there. And I just, he can't have been named that. Like, there's no way we, we had a guy named Millard Fillmore as president it's just it's unbelievable it's why he wants he has funny factor he has weirdo name factor he has everything factor it's just it's nuts he deserves the win congratulations and uh that's it that's all for me today happy fourth of july